Hi, um, my name is Emily Grover, and for my restoration project, I decided to research Joseph Smith and his family, um, and particularly their influence on the restoration. So I'm titling this project, um, Joseph Smith and his family's influence. Um, <clears throat> for the related units of study, since this is kind of a broad <clears throat> topic concerning the whole restoration, there's quite a few. Um, unit 2, the First Vision, Unit 3, the Book of Mormon, Unit 4, Restoration of the Priesthood and the Finding of the Church, um, Unit 9, Kirkland Opposition, and Missouri Expulsion, Unit 11, Eternal Marriage and Plural Marriage, and Unit 12, Martyrdom Secession, and the Western Exodus. Um, for the related major concepts, I think that all the concepts from Unit 3 are relatively applicable. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that's the coming forth of the Book of Mormon, the translation of the Book of Mormon, um, translation instruments, and foundational doctrinal messages of the Book of Mormon. And the reason I picked that one specifically is because they are kind of the beginning of the Restoration, right? And so without those, and specifically without the help of Joseph Smith's family in those events, none of the rest of the restoration would be able to continue onward. Um, so I thought those were very um, poignant and helpful markers of the beginning of both the restoration and Joseph's family's influence on those events, right? Okay. Um, for the type of doctrine, this one honestly stumped me for a little while, but I think I'm putting it at supportive doctrine because um, this isn't something salvational and something necessary for, you know, um, you know, exaltation or anything. It's not about baptism. It's not about anything like that. Um, but it really does support those truths because um, it's about the strength of family and how family can be super helpful. Um, so although it's not an unchanging truth of salvation, it supports those truths um, and is helpful in understanding them. Um, and the reason I think it's helpful in understanding, um, you know, core doctrine is because the takeaway here, I, I want to be that family is very powerful and however you define family um, in your life, um, those people can help make um, your goals possible. In the same way that um, Joseph Smith's family made the restoration possible, our families can help us make things possible in our own lives. Um, and in my research, I, the two key concepts that stuck out to me um, about Joseph Smith's family is one, that the restoration of the church would not have been possible without the help of Joseph Smith's family. They were his support system the whole time through, and um, without them, I simply don't think that this would have been possible. And the second concept is that Joseph Smith's, sorry, Joseph Smith's family is very special because they were so helpful um, in Joseph Smith's kind of um, goals and um, ability to restore the church because they were so in touch with the spirit for their whole lives. Um, they were not people who kind of were oblivious to God or the spirit. The spirit. Um, they were very devout religious people for a lot of their lives and made a conscious effort to be religious and in tune with the spirit and that was what set them up to be super helpful for Joseph Smith. Um, okay, so for my actual research, um, I looked at uh, two books, two talks, two deeds, two verses, you know, two, one Joseph Smith Papers quote. Um, for the related scholarly articles or books, I chose to do books just because a friend had a whole shelf of like LDS literature and I was like, oh, that's perfect. Um, so the, the books I read, the first one is by Ivan J. Barrett and it's called Joseph Smith and the Restoration, A History of the LDS Church to 1846. And then the second one is by Lucy Max Smith. Um, and it's a history of Joseph Smith by his mother. And both of them talk about connections to um, Joseph Smith's family and how they were helpful in the restoration, but especially the one by Joseph Smith's mom was really interesting to read through. Um, I didn't read the whole thing, but I kind of, you know, looked through it and read a couple chapters. And you can really see how influential Lucy was on Joseph Smith, how much she prayed for him, how much she helped in the cause, how much she really was a support system for Joseph Smith. And she talks about um, his siblings and his father and stuff too, but of course she wrote the book, so it's a lot about her relationship with Joseph. And they were really there for Joseph. Um, for the related talks, they're both by M. Russell Ballard. The first one is called Hiram Smith, Firm as the Pillars of Heaven, and the second one is The Family of the Prophet Joseph Smith. Um, and they both obviously talk about Joseph Smith's family, but um, the first one really focuses on Hiram, which I think was really interesting and super important because you see again and again as you do this research that Hiram is really Joseph's right-hand man um, and Joseph would not be able to do any of the stuff he did without Hiram's help. 
Um, for the related DNC sections and verses, the first one is DNC 132.54, and it says, And I command mine handmaid, Emma Smith, to abide and cleave unto my servant Joseph, and to none else. But if she will not abide this commandment, she shall be destroyed, saith the Lord. For I am the Lord thy God, and will destroy her if she abide not in my law. So that one's just talking about Emma. And the second one is about Hiram, and it is DNC 124, 124. It says, First, I give unto you Hiram Smith to be a patriarch unto you, to hold the sealing blessings of my church, even the Holy Spirit of promise, whereby ye are sealed up unto the day of redemption, that ye may not fall, withstanding the hour of temptation that may come upon you. Again, Hiram Smith is super important. And for the Joseph Smith Papers quote, it's a letter from Hiram's, Hiram's extradition of Joseph Smith for treason. Um... And he says, and now the people of that state, Missouri, a portion of them would be glad to make the people of the state uh, believe that my brother Joseph has committed treason for the purpose of keeping up their murderous and hellish persecution, persecution, sorry. <laughs> and they seem to be unrelenting and thirsting for the blood of innocence. For I do know most positively that my brother Joseph has not committed treason, nor violated one solitary item of law or rule in the state of Missouri. But I do know that the Mormon people in mass were driven out of the state after being robbed of all they had, and they barely escaped with their lives. Um, so once again, I just want to draw home the point that Joseph Smith's family was essential to the restoration, um, much in the same way that our families can be essential um, to any to restoration in our lives in any sense of the word. Um, of course, none of us are probably trying to restore a new gospel, but um, any restoration or project or desire we have, uh, we should rely on our families uh, for help in that. Yeah, thank you.